I don't really know where the month of April went. I think everything just blurred together in the deep dark hole that was the month of April. But hey, I got some reading done. Hi guys, it's April and it's time for my April reading wrap up. For this wrap up, I'm actually only going to be talking about seven books that I read in the month of April because in the middle of April, we had the stay home reading rush in which I read three other books. I will link that wrap up in case you're interested in what I read for that. But here I'm only gonna talk about the other books that I read this month, which brings the total books for the month of April to 10 books, which means my overall total for the year so far is 62 reads. For the 10 books that I read this month, they ended up totaling 3,901 pages, which means I have read 16,820 pages so far this year. I've been averaging for the month of April about 130 pages a day, which is about three days per read. And if you break it down even finer than that, it was about 83 pages an hour for a total of 57 hours and 30 minutes. But I suppose that not everybody really cares cares about the stats, so I'm just gonna start talking about the books. The first book I finished in the month of April was The King of Crows by Libra Bray. This is the final book in the Diviner series, which is a 1920s supernatural thriller suspense, beautiful creation that I have absolutely loved since the beginning. And I can't believe it has taken me this long to read the final book in this series. I really enjoyed how everything came together finally and how things went down. There were points in this book where you have the eerie meeting the beautiful writing of Libra Bray. And of course, I absolutely loved seeing my home state very much represented in this book. I mean, what it looked like in the 1920s, which wasn't really that much, but it's not often that I get to say I read a book about my state. So that is a thing that happened and that might have swayed my opinion on this book just a little bit. But when you see yourself in a book, it's, it's hard not to like that book. But just see Seeing this cast of characters dealing with everything that has gone down to this point without giving any of the spoilers away. It's heartbreaking, especially at moments where certain realizations are happening, but it's good. I really, truly enjoyed it. The next book I read was The Sisters Grimm by Mina Vren Prague. I have a full review on this book. I received an arc of it. I will link it up above and down below in case you are interested. But this book follows four girls, four sisters unknown to each other, who start to have weird and bizarre things happen in their life. Unbeknownst to them, they are being hunted. On their 18th birthday, they are going to have to make a choice. This book is written in such a whimsical style. It tends to float back and forth between these girls from their 13th year to their 17th, almost 18th year. You get to see perspectives from all of them. And it does take a lot of the fairy tale elements that I always love to see in books. And it scatters them throughout their lives. Now, there are certain things in this book that I didn't really understand. There were choices made in the plot that weren't fully explained to the extent that I wanted them to be, which left me feeling a little bereft when it all ended. And the fact that some of these switches between perspectives felt very jarring, especially when sometimes it changed between third person and first person. So there were little elements in this book that made the reading experience not the best. Best. I was really looking forward to this book because of those Brother Grimm aspects, but it didn't quite hold up to where I wanted it to be. I finally read The Secret of Lost Things by Sheridan Hay. This is the story of 18-year-old Rosemary who moves to New York. She ends up working at a bookstore, forming relationships with a lot of the other employees, but because she's so young, she gets herself into some interesting situations, especially relationship-wise not just romantically, but friendship wise as well. At the same time that she's working at this bookstore, there starts this quest for the lost manuscript of Herman Melville. And this greatly influences her way of thinking, her reading, and her interactions with other people. I was very excited about the premise of this book, especially being a reader and relating to this whole bookshop. And overall, it was a very good book, but at the same time, I spent most of the book just wanting to shake Rosemary 
preparing so much because I could see exactly how everything was gonna lay out but it was good to see this very wide range of characters in this bookshop both physically and in sexual orientation I just think that this is a denser read than I wanted for this time in my life right now I'm looking more for the fluffy and less of the introspective meteor reads I suppose that's the way I can put that then for my local book club book pick we decided on Sophia Princess of Beasts by James Patterson and Emily Raymond. Now, honestly, I'm going to have a hard time explaining what the plot of this story is because it's a little all over the place, in my opinion. But it starts out with a princess named Sophia who is dealing with the possibility of an invasion of her kingdom. After a series of circumstances that seem a little weird and bizarre, she ends up in a completely different realm where beasts are real and she herself is one of them. I do like how this story takes a a whole bunch of characters from mythology and throws them in and makes them actual characters within this other kingdom, this other realm. But a lot of the time, I didn't like Sophia. She seemed a little entitled and a little unaware of pretty much all of reality. But at the same time, somehow she managed to convince her father that he needed to back down from being this very aggressive king and somehow receive training with the sword and other such weapons. To read this story and to fully enjoy it you need to be able to suspend your disbelief there is a lot of things that go on in this story that just were convenient dead people come back to life for no other reason because it just makes for a happy ending a lot of things aren't explained at all you don't really get the full understanding of what happened and why it's just kind of there and honestly I did read this one more towards the beginning of the month and when we met for book club I didn't remember a whole lot of it it took me a while for it to slowly start sinking back. I just remember being deeply confused most of this read. And I think that could be my review right there. Confusing. <laughs> but I also remember after I finished reading this book that I didn't really feel one way or the other about it. I was just kind of muh. And maybe that is why I didn't remember a lot of the plot points of this book after two, three weeks of reading the book. Sometimes time changes your feeling towards whatever. I don't know. It's, it's one of those books that is very forgettable, I suppose. Then for the Tell It Again book club that I host with Shay over at Shay Geeks Out, we read Cress, book three in the Lunar Chronicles series. This one is centered around Cress, who is a lunar stuck up in a satellite observing Earth. Her story very much looks like a Rapunzel retelling, and I love the elements of Rapunzel that you see scattered throughout this book. I also enjoyed seeing the cast from both Cinder and from Scarlet coming back into play and them dealing with a bunch of stuff. <gasps> I do remember why this book has been one of my favorite in the series. Shay and I did a live show discussion on this book. I will link it for you if you don't mind spoilers, but we go into a whole lot of things. We have a whole lot of thoughts, so I highly recommend that you go check this out. I'm excited to get to winter next month. This is actually the first time I've been rereading The Lunar Chronicles, and I don't know why it's taking me this long to get back to these books. I then picked up Looking Glass by Christina Henry. This is a collection of novellas that are part of an Alice in Wonderland retelling. I didn't realize this was part of a series going into this. I received an art copy of this book. Didn't necessarily do all of my research before I received it. But that being said, I still really enjoyed this read, even though I didn't have the context of the earlier books. I found myself captivated by these characters, and I may have to go back and pick up the other books in this series and start from the beginning, because I really like the world world that was developed here. And next time I request an art copy, I'll probably double, triple check that it's not part of a, a bigger series. Especially if it doesn't explicitly say in the synopsis, just saying. And finally, last but not least, I picked up Mermaid Moon by Susan Kokel. This is the story of a young Sheevish named Sana who goes on land to find her landish mother. She is sent by the sea witch of her flock on a mission to retrieve something. She doesn't necessarily know what she's supposed to be retrieving, but the witch is supposedly going to know when she brings it back. This is a Little Mermaid inspired retelling with a lot of other little fairy tales thrown in as well, which I loved 
so much. The writing in this book is wonderful. I did struggle a little bit with some of the themes that kept on popping up inside of this story. That was probably what held me back from really enjoying this read as much as I could have. It was more towards the end when things started really picking up and the magic really started coming into play that this read just took off for me. It is also a darker read. It does take a darker spin on mermaid folklore, which I liked. I do have a full review on this as well if you'd like to go and check that out. I did receive this as an art copy, but that did not sway my opinions on it. They are still my own and I very much lay it out in that review. So those are the rest of the books that I read in the month of April. Tell me down below how you've been keeping yourself occupied for these last four weeks. What's something new that you've discovered about yourself? Just tell me down below. And of course, if you want to stay up to date with every time I upload, subscribe and I heart your beautiful faces. Bye. Yeah. You're gonna bring it here and be quiet? Yeah? Did you bring did you bring me a little a little teddy bear? She brought me she brought me her little teddy bear. Do you want your teddy bear back?